Hey everyone, welcome back to Dietitians and Nutrition Support. My name is Lauren, I'm a dietitian and I'm a graduate of a combined Masters of Science in Dietetic Internship program. And today I have Allie here joining me. Hello everyone, my name is Allie and I am a distance dietetic intern in my first year. And being that it's fall, if you're watching real time with us, then you'll know that just around the corner is dietetic internship application season. Um, so we are in the thick of picking programs, trying to figure out where folks are going, putting together application materials, and getting ready for spring match if you are a person applying for spring match. So today we're going to give you a walkthrough of what types of programs there are how you might want to think about picking programs, and also what you might need to do if you are looking towards a program that requires you to pick rotation sites. So if you're looking to become a dietitian, you may already know some of this, but just to give us a good overview of what the landmarks are prior to becoming a dietitian, first you're going to need to complete a bachelor's degree. Typically, you'll see folks completing that bachelor's in dietetics, but technically, you can complete your bachelor's degree in a different program, such as biology, for example, as long as you complete all of the necessary dietetic didactic program requirements. So meaning you took all of the classes that you need to qualify for a dietetic internship. Those courses are going to include things like anatomy, biochemistry, organic chemistry, as well as nutrition specific courses like medical nutrition therapy. After you've completed and graduated with your bachelor's degree and all of your dietetics program course material is finished, then you'll get what's called a verification statement. This verification statement is essentially the golden ticket that you need to qualify for applying for a dietetic internship. Dietetic internships come in a few different forms, which we'll talk a little bit more about in just a minute, uh, but generally they are supervised practice experiences, and they have to be fairly long. There are over 1,200 hours of supervised practice, so you get a lot of hands-on training with the supervision of a dietitian or another qualified practitioner who can provide you with the skills that you'll need to become an entry-level dietitian. In your dietetic internship, you'll work in food service, clinical, and community settings, all to complete competencies to say that you are able to sit for the registered dietitian's exam. So once you've finished your internship, completed all the competencies, then you can go and take the uh, registration examination for dietitians, which we also call that RD exam. And once you've done the RD exam and passed, then yay, you've made it your dietitian. So now, at the time that this video is being filmed, the current minimum education requirement for dietitians is a bachelor's degree, but come the start of January 1st, 2024, it will soon become a graduate degree requirement to become a dietitian, meaning if you are going to become eligible to sit for the registration exam for dietitians after the 1st of 2024, then you will need to complete a graduate degree. This could be a master's degree or higher. If you're a person who's going to become eligible to sit for the exam prior to 2024, meaning all the way up until the end of December 2023, you can still qualify to sit for the exam so long as you become qualified to sit prior to 2024. If you are one of those people who's not going to become eligible until after the change in education requirements, you're going to need to start making plans for how you want to approach meeting that minimum level of a graduate degree for becoming a dietitian. So we typically see two rounds of application periods for dietetic internships. Oftentimes you'll see things for spring match and there's also a fall match. Spring match is typically the bigger of the two matches, meaning there's gonna be more programs and more uh, positions available, uh, but fall match is also going to have programs and different positions available. So certainly both of them are ways to get started in a dietetic internship. And just note that the timing of when you apply and then accept a position during a specific cycle will determine when you're going to start your program. If you're interested in learning more about specific types of dietetic internship programs based on either the state that they're located in or the type of program that they are, you can check out a great website uh, that is ran by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. I'll put the link to it in, the com in our comment box below. Um, and that website is just really helpful in saying, you know, I'm really interested in living in 
uh, Missouri. And if I want to live in Missouri, what dietetic internship options do I have here? And it'll provide a list of all of those to you, the location of the program, the institution that runs the program, the person of contact, and a small description, as well as that link to the website so you can start checking out the website and seeing more details. So look for that in the comments boxes below if you are still hunting around for your perfect dietetic internship. Okay, so let's talk about the four major types of dietetic internships. The first type is a traditional DI. In a traditional DI, the supervised practice experiences or the rotation sites are typically selected for the interns by the program director, meaning they're already set up. You know exactly what rotations you're going to go to when you sign up and accept a position in the program. DI directors for traditional DIs are going to set up experiences in all three realms of food service, clinical, and community work. Students are expected to meet all of the competencies needed to uh, fulfill the dietetic internship, and there may be a few assignments here or there for the internship itself. Most traditional DI programs are full-time programs, meaning you'll be at a rotation site for four to five days a week, and you'll be working probably at least 40 hours a week. The second type of dietetic internship is the type of internship that I chose to do. This was a dual master's degree in dietetic internship program, sometimes called a combined program. Typically, combined programs are two-year programs in which you'll complete coursework for a master's degree. This could be a master's in science, master's in public health, um, or a different type of master's degree, and you'll complete that coursework as well as completing rotations just as you would with a traditional dietetic internship. That's why we oftentimes see these taking up to two years because you may spend time just doing coursework and may spend time just doing rotation sites. These programs are full-time, so they'll typically be 50 to 70 hours of work a week, depending on how much time you spend in rotation sites, which could be anywhere from four to five days a week, and then also having the additional coursework in which you'll take a few units of coursework every single term until you can earn the graduate degree. It's important to know that some programs will organize the way that you approach the scheduling differently. Some programs have you do the master's degree and then the internship. Some people have you do the internship and then the master's degree. And some programs will have you working both on master's coursework and on your internship rotations at the same time. If you have a preference for one of these timelines versus another one of these timelines, it may be a good question to ask of the program to see how that, that is all handled. But note that there is going to be a fairly large time commitment trying to make sure that you can reach all of these deadlines for both the rotation sites and for any graduate work. The third type of dietetic internship is called a distance dietetic internship. Distance DIs are when you, as the student who is completing the internship, are going to set up your own rotation sites. The dietetic internship director is going to be helpful for the student here in providing information about the competencies that the student needs to meet at their internship rotation sites, but the student is largely going to be in charge of making the choice of what rotation sites they're most interested in and setting up all of those rotations for themselves. For the most part, distance DI programs can be at a real distance because you won't really interact with your dietetic internship program director in person, but more so in an online fashion. And students who are in distance DIs are going to need to be on top of their game in terms of communication to make sure that they're reaching out to preceptors and helping to coordinate that for themselves. It can also be helpful to have a few different contacts for where you might do rotations prior to actually applying for a distance DI program. You can see distance DI programs happening at both half-time and full-time rates. So you could be a person that does 40 to 50 hours a week if you're doing a full-time program, or if you're a person who wants to, say, work another job or has other obligations that you need to attend to, you could do them at a part-time rate. So you could do somewhere like 20 hours a week. Again, you're still going to need to meet the minimum number of hours to complete the internship as well as complete all your competencies. The fourth type of internship is called the Individualized Supervised Practice Pathway or an ISPP. 
Typically, you'll see less individuals completing an ISPP as opposed to other types of dietetic internships, and that's because there's specific qualifying criteria to be able to complete one. The first qualifying criteria to complete an ISPP is that you needed to have completed your bachelor's degree and have your verification statement and have applied to dietetic internship programs but not matched to a program. That will make you eligible for an ISPP. The other way you can become eligible for an ISPP is if you have a doctoral degree. So if you've already completed your doctorate and you're interested in doing an internship, ISPPs are an option for you. If you're a person who holds a doctorate degree who's trying to do an ISPP, just keep in mind that you may have some additional coursework that's requested of you prior to starting the ISPP. So ISPPs, similar to all dietetic internships, are going to be supervised practice experiences. And these ISPPs will also qualify whoever completes them for sitting for the registration examination for dietitians. And typically, you'll see the ISPP programs being uh, supervised by either the person that oversees dietetic internships or the person that oversees the DPD undergraduate program at a specific institution. So similar to distance dietetic internship programs, ISPPs are really going to be up to the student to set up their rotation sites. So they're going to need to reach out and contact preceptors, make selections on those sites, and then set all of their supervised practice up for themselves. And if there's a program who has an ISPP program available for those who qualify, they may in some cases have a few rotation sites already set up. So it's important to look at their website to kind of see a little bit more detail as to what that looks like, how much of it is planned, and how much of the planning would be on the student. You may be able to, in some cases, count dietetics related experience towards your qualified practice hours that you need for your ISPP. This could be an instance such as if prior to starting your ISPP, you were doing some volunteer work in a specific type of nutrition community outreach setting, you could be able to qualify some of those hours towards your ISPP once the program has started. You might additionally be able to count things like part-time work that's in a related field um, towards your ISPP hours as well. So while there may be a few exceptions like that, it's also important to note that again, ISPPs are not something that everyone qualifies for, and they're definitely gonna be something that you need to speak specifically with the program director about to see how you can best negotiate getting practice hours for previous experiences and how you'll continue to earn the rest of your supervised practice hours. All right, so let's talk through some tips for trying to pick a dietetic internship and finding one that is the best fit for you. My first tip for you is to really utilize the resources that are available to you. Every dietetic internship is going to have a web page and they may also have social media pages that are going to try and describe to you various things about the internship program. On these pages, you're going to want to look for information such as what are the potential rotation sites? Is there any opportunity to get funding support? Will you get graduate credit for any of your work? Where might you be located for this internship? Will you be traveling a lot and does it require a car? If there's a graduate degree involved, are there both thesis and non-thesis options? Do they already have some projects outlined of interest or is there a potential list of advisors that could help you with your research during a master's program? And really use these resources to find the answers to any questions that you might have. If you are interested in a program and maybe you have extra questions or maybe you just want to introduce yourself to the program director, my next tip is to reach out to the program director. Use this as a time to just introduce yourself, ask a few clarifying questions that maybe were not yet answered on their website or social media pages, and just kind of put your best foot forward um, in trying to learn more about the program. You may also have a chance to meet up with dietetic internship directors at things like internship fairs. There can oftentimes be regional fairs that you can go to that you can meet a few different programs in the area at one time, and you may be able to see a program that you're interested in or just learn about programs that are new to you that you maybe haven't looked at yet. 
Um, and you may also see really large internship fairs, such as the one that's ran at Fancy each year, where you can get to meet tons of different internship directors and learn about the programs, as well as meet with current or past interns. My next tip for you is to make sure to apply only to programs that you are willing to accept a position from. All these different programs are going to have different rotation sites, different costs, different locations, different requirements for transportation, and each of those things needs to be something that you're going to accept and be happy with for the program that you actually end up going to. So even if you apply to six programs, if the sixth program on your list is not somewhere you're excited to go, is not something that you can afford to do, it's not something, not somewhere you want to be, anything like that don't put that program on your list. Only apply to programs that you're really willing and able to go to uh, to make sure that you don't accidentally get yourself in a situation that's not going to be positive for yourself. Here's some more tips and more details about dietetic internships from Allie. So as a current DI, some of the tips that I found helpful whenever selecting what kind of program I wanted to go with was considering what your long-term goals are. So like what kind of patients you might want to work with, do you want clinical, community, food service, or maybe a slightly more specific path of research, only pediatric patients, etc. Look at the offerings from specific, specific programs, do they have a focus you like, what specific rotation sites do they have, or consider how building your own rotation sites might offer you some additional flexibility. And then another thing to think about is that a master's degree is required after 2025. So just make sure you kind of are in the loop as to what you might want to do to meet that requirement. Okay, so say you find some programs that you're interested in applying to. Typically, prospective interns will have anywhere from two to six programs that they're interested in going to. Most application for dietetic internships will take place through the DICAS process, or also known as Dietetic Internship Centralized Application Services. This online portal for applications will be how you provide all your application materials like letters of recommendation, transcripts, personal statements, and other information. There is a hard deadline for die-pass applications to be completed by for both the spring and the fall match. So make sure to keep that in mind and try to be early for submission rather than later. Additionally, if you are applying to a combined program, you may be asked to apply for the graduate school at the particular university as well. After you apply to DICAST, you may be asked to do a phone or video interview with the program director or provide supplemental materials, all of which you will complete prior to match day, which is typically a designated day in which all internship positions are announced. There are some instances in which you might have a situation where you apply for an internship outside of DICAST, such as pre-select options. These are fairly specific to the program in question, so if you want to know this information, Make sure to check out the program website or ask the program director specifically to get those details. So remember when we talked about distance dietetic internships and ISPPs? Well, those are the internship where the sites are not always set up for you and you are responsible for setting up your internship. So I'm just going to go over what that could kind of look like. So a lot of times your program will give you a list of potential sites and the contact information of the preceptors of those sites. However, if your program does not do this, you will need to brainstorm some sites that you might be interested in interning at. These sites could be hospitals, community clinics, oncology centers, K through 12 schools, colleges or universities, nursing homes, health departments, a sports team, even a professional sports team, or fitness centers. Pretty much as long as there is a registered dietitian or other qualified individual employed at the facility, then it's probably an option for you. So once you find some sites that you are interested in, you will need to reach out to that facility. You can either shoot them an email or give them a phone call. Whichever one you choose, you will need to make sure that you state who you are, what program you're in, what date you would like to complete the rotation, and why you would like to work at that site. This will kind of give that preceptor a better idea of what you want to do, who you are, and where you're wanting to go with your experience. Another tip for selecting sites is making sure you're reaching out to preceptors early, as in a couple months in advance. Oftentimes, sites will require you to fill out lots of paperwork, so it's important to give yourself plenty of time to complete everything. Once everything is settled with your preceptor, make sure to check in about a month or so before your rotation starts, just to ensure that 
you have everything and they don't need anything else from you, like a background check or pre-employment physical, it's important that you do this because let's say you reach out a couple days before and you need some extra paperwork, then that could potentially delay your start date and your graduation date as well. So then about a week before you start, you could reach out again just to discuss basic things like dress code, where you should park, what time is your lunch break? Is there a fridge or microwave available for you to use? We hope this was a helpful introduction into what dietetic internships look like, including the format, some tips for selecting where to apply, and what to anticipate for a distance type of internship. Let us know any of your tips or questions regarding dietetic internships in the comments below, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.